Okay, for our personal magazine cover, a couple things you want to consider, and that is <clears throat> what kind of colors you want to uh, show off, and also what kind of uh, areas you can create in the magazine. So you want to do some kind of layout that works for you, but that also can highlight the text too. We don't want to uh, we don't want to put the text in front of something that's really busy, like this picture, perhaps that's going to keep the readers from seeing the text. So what I suggest to do maybe is do some kind of a, uh, another layer here. So let me, let me uh, add another layer here. We'll put that one on the bottom, as a matter of fact. And let's just give it a background color. Um, we could either do, we could do a solid there, or we could do, well, let's click on the foreground here. Let's look at color libraries here. Okay, let's... Let's try maybe, uh, well, let's go up to the paint can here and let's see if we can get some kind of a gradient tool going here. And let's see if we can get some, uh, let's see, we've got a lot of green in there. So maybe a red, let's try a red or an orange maybe. Let's see what we can get here. Ooh, that's kind of neat right there. Maybe a two-tone or a three-tone. And let's just, once you grab the color here, you just drag it across your screen, and that affects kind of how the uh, how the gradient's going to go. Okay, so let's say you like that and you want to use that. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm going to bring now go up to my picture here and bring the size down. You can do it up here under Edit, Transform, or Control T is your free transform there, and then you can just go on to one of these corners, bring this thing down. And I want to have maybe about that much space. And I'll bring this over here, snap that into place. That looks kind of cool. Um, hit enter. And now I have a spot for my title up here, and I have a spot for some of my articles and things like that. So that's kind of neat. Um, let's do this. Let's move this over. Let me grab my move tool and move this over just a little bit and then see if we can widen it without making me look fatter than I already am. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, that just made it go up again. So let's go here, hold down shift, and then you notice there when I did that, makes me wider. So I'm gonna, um, let me get that right on the edge there, and then hold down shift, bring that up a little bit. I think I can live with that. That's better, okay. So the next thing you want to consider would be, um, actually, let's go back here one more time. Sorry, control T and I want to bring this in a little bit, um, because I want to have enough room to put the titles there. There. And I look skinnier. <laughs> All right. So, um, next thing I want to consider maybe is putting a title up here. Um, I'm going to just start with some text. So I'm going to do it on its own layer. So I have freedom to move it as I please. So I'm going to click new layer. And your text tool is the T tool here in the toolbar. So let's grab that. And let's do horizontal. That's what we want. Um, and we're going to just type something up here. I'm going to just put my name. Um, so J-E-R-E-M-Y, Acker. Or you can just, or you can make up a magazine name. I was thinking this would be a good one because I'm a dad. Dad's Rock Magazine. <laughs> so I'm going to grab this. Uh, we need to bump that font up huge, right? So let's let's get a better font too. These that font sucks. <laughs> so um, we need something that's kind of hip. Dad's trying to hold on to being cool right i'm not cool anymore to my kids so let's find something that seems kind of cool uh, that's kind of cool i like that it kind of has a 70s vibe i'm all about the 70s i was born in 1970 so that's even better oh i like that too look how the gradient comes through on that too well, maybe that's just because i'm on that layer Darn it, lost it. <laughs> Still, I like that um, title a lot. So I can use that. Um, 
I wonder if I could bring that up any higher. Let's see if we can punch a number in there and it'll recognize it. Oh, I have to select it first. Okay, so, it's, so this is a good lesson right here. To select the text, you can just click on it with your text tool like that. Or if you're not on that, if you're on a different layer, let's say, and you want to select the text, just go right here onto the T and hit Control, push Control. Control click will select it like that. Do you see how I did that? And here we could do a gradient on that too, but I'm afraid that it's going to mask it too much if I do that. Okay, so let's get out of there. So uh, Control D to deselect it. Double click on the. Uh, actually, that didn't work. It usually does. Hold down Control, click the T. There we go. Now we got our fonts back up here. And where's our? Uh, oh, well, I guess we have to have the T tool selected. Let's try um, 84. So that does work actually. So you can actually use a bigger font even if it's not listed in there. That's good. So dad's rock. Let's get rid of the apostrophe. I don't know why that's in there. Okay. And we can also grab this thing using the move tool and move it around wherever we want. We could snap it into place or we can even turn off snap. Okay. So again, uh, you grab your T tool and just Go right out on that layer. If you're already on that layer, and uh, select the text. Oops. Control D. Let's deselect that. I don't know. My computer's tripping out here. Hang on, just a second. Oh, I added an extra layer there on accident. We want to delete that. Yes. And also delete this one. Yes. Okay. So we're back to our uh, text layer here. So again. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Control Z. Just get rid of that. Stay on this layer. Again, Control click on the T here in the layer. That'll select it. And let's make this bigger. Let's go 100. That's much better. Okay. So then Control D to deselect it. Let's grab our move tool and see if we can get this thing to. Maybe up a little higher, and then we'll put a little uh, a little note about what kind of magazine it is. So we're going to do a new layer. We're going to grab the T tool, and down here we're going to put what this is all about. Okay. So let's grab this, and we'll make the font smaller. Let's make it 16. The magazine for hip dads who are losing their hair follicles. <laughs> All right. Why not? Let's have some fun. You got to be able to laugh at yourself, right? That's There's no way around aging. But um, that's part of the process. So, um. So the magazine for hip dads who are losing their hair follicles. You know, something like that where you could have a little uh, description of the magazine. And then we'll go down to this fractal or this uh, picture that I created. Control T it again. And we'll just do some quick adjusting of the picture here. So there I get to make myself look skinnier. Yay. Enter there, and that looks pretty good. Now I have room here for some text and some other things. And one other thing I wanted to do, I want to make this magazine look official, right? So I'm going to click on a, the plus sign here. And I'm going to make a barcode. I think that would really help this and put a price tag on this. I think this magazine is, could be $9.95. I think people would pay that. Just kidding. Uh, but anyway, let's grab this rectangular marquee tool. We'll put a little barcode down on here somewhere that looks pretty good maybe uh, yeah that's good right there fill that in with uh, white let's grab our paint can that's where our gradient tool was let's fill that in awesome and then let's also 
let's just do this. Let's duplicate this layer. So we're going to take this layer now and we're going to duplicate it. Now we have two of those, right? Okay, control D to deselect it. Now on this second layer, I want to select that entire layer. So control click. Again, all I'm doing is holding down the control button and clicking on the layer square in the layer window. And now I'm going to make that black. Okay. And now what I can do is uh, let's just grab, let's zoom in and we'll grab an eraser tool. So I'm going to deselect this. I am going to zoom in extremely here. Always helps when you're zoomed in, right? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. And now to make the barcode, I'm just going to use some, uh, my selector here. And I'm just going to select different widths. Okay, to delete. So right there, I can hit delete there. And let's move this selection over maybe to about here. We'll do the same thing again. Hit delete. Maybe another one of that width right here. And right there. Okay, so now let me grab another selection here. Let's do a slightly thicker one there. That looks good. Hit delete. Maybe another one right there. Again, trying to make it look a bit random. And maybe one more right there. Okay. All right. Let's do it again. Control D. Again, I got my selector tool. Let's do a real thin one next. That looks like a good spot. Maybe one right there. How about another one right there. That looks good. One there. And let's go one over here too. Why not? Okay. Deselect that. And let's do a slightly thicker one there. Again. About there. Now let's move it over just a hair. Perfect. Okay. One right there. Control D. So far so good. Uh, let's do maybe a couple more here. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and then maybe one more tiny one over here, too. Love it. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, so we got a little barcode on there. Uh, now, what I can do is I can just merge that. I can turn off the eyeball on the two layers beneath it and merge these layers to get and turn off the title, too merge these two visible layers right here, which are these two barcode. So now I can just merge those, go up to layer, choose merge visible. Okay. And the barcode now is only on one layer. Okay. I'm going to type barcode here. So I know what it is. It's always a good idea to name your layers. Let's turn everything else back on. And you can look at this now and see that The barcode kind of makes it look a little more official, right? Now we need to put a price tag on it as well. So I'm going to take that barcode, move it up just a little bit with my move tool. There you notice it's on guides there. <clears throat> okay. And then what other things we can look at to make things look a little more professional is, well, let's take a look here. I've got a magazine here, <clears throat> magazine cover that I'm kind of, basing that I was off of. It's a guitar magazine that I like to read once in a while. And if you look at the barcode, you notice there's some other things around it. There's a price tag on the top for U.S. and Canada. There's the issue, the month, and then there's some numbers on the bottom too. So I'm going to kind of imitate that. Um, so let's start with the, the price to on it. Again, this is about a $7.95 magazine, easily. Just kidding. Um, but I'm going to do that. I'll just add a new layer right here. 
we're going to again select an area up above it that looks pretty good right there and we'll fill that in with black control D to deselect it oh it's a little off huh well I have a better idea watch this I can uh, control T and just resize it across this way across this way hit enter and then what I can do is go into my barcode layer right control click all right and then let's move this up let me grab my move or my selection tool here and let's move this up right there I'm not sure if it's lined up for there we go vertically right there We'll go back to this layer, right, the bar layer that we're on, and we'll choose inverse. Remember that? Select select the inverse of that area and then hit delete. And there you've eliminated the edges. Okay. And now we're right on. Okay. So that looks good. Um, and then now we'll put the price tag on there. So let's go ahead and do another layer here. And we'll just use our text tool again. I'm going to click right on there and we're going to choose well blacks already selected that's good let's bring this down to 14 maybe type in USA 795 and oh I gotta change that to white I meant to do white not black Okay, and let's change that right up here. Click OK. There's the price. I love it. It's a little too big, but I like the same font. So let's keep that. USA 795. Uh, and let's do Canada 1395. <laughs> How about that? Canada. Thirteen ninety-five. Bring this back a little bit, and then maybe we'll make the font a little bit smaller. It's still kind of compact there, so let's bring it down to eleven. So there we have our price tag, right? And then uh, let's see what else can we do. We can also add those numbers down below here. So let's do that. Let's grab uh, again. Let's go ahead and uh, select an area here. Maybe about right there to about right here. Let's make it a little bigger and we'll move it up. Perfect. And we'll fill that in with white. Um, Let's do it on a new layer, though. Yeah, let's make sure we're on our own layer. Okay, let's click there. And then on that layer, again, let's make a new one off of that, and then we'll do our numbers. So Control D to deselect. Now we'll put our numbers in there. So that would be a text tool again. We're going to click right down in there. Two. Actually, we need black text there, right? And maybe a different font would work better there. So let's grab something else. Let's just grab a normal, maybe sans serif font. Let's try this one. Two. That's good. I like that. Three, zero, one, six, six, four, five, dash. O nine eight nine five four dash two one. You know, something like that. We're just completely making it up, so why not? And so that looks kind of official there with the number. Okay, looks pretty good there. So now what we can do again is turn off the areas we don't want to flatten. And we're just left with the barcode. So now we can uh 
click on the, one of the visible layers there, right? And we're going to merge visible again under layer. Merge visible. So now our barcode is only on one layer. A lot of time just for that, right? I'd rather you make your own than just borrow one. Um, that looks good though. Okay, so now I can zoom out and take a look here. We've got a price on it. We've got a barcode. Um, so it's looking much more official that way. And then let's turn on the title again. And we need to move that text layer. I don't know what happened. Are, is that all one layer now? I didn't mean to do that. No, they're still separate. But where's this magazine layer? Oh, okay. It's on the barcode layer. I didn't realize that. So let's do this. Okay, there, there's an easy fix for that. Let's call this uh, subheading. Okay, and then we'll duplicate this. Watch this. We'll duplicate this, and this will be our barcode. Okay, so I just duplicated that layer. And on the barcode layer, I'm going to select the subheading and delete it. So bar make sure you're on the barcode layer. Now I can go up here and select that part of that I don't need, hit delete. So now you can see that that's gone on the on the barcode layer. Okay. And now on the subheading layer, I'm going to delete the barcode. Okay. So I'm still going to keep everything on. So I select that, hit delete. And now look, the, when I turn the barcode off, it's gone. It's only, and then when I turn off the subheading, it's gone too. Why did I do that? Well, now I can control where I put the subheading. I can move that without moving the barcode. So that's why it's a good idea to do things on their own layer, because then you can move them around and keep them separate. Oops, wrong layer there. Uh, so now I need to go to subheading. Make sure you're selected on the right layer. What ha I think auto select is on right now. Oh, no, yeah, it's auto select up top here. If that's on, turn that off so you don't accidentally auto select another layer. You see what I'm saying? So now when I go to subheading, I will not select another layer because I turned off. Uh, I turned off auto select. That's still a little too low, right? So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. So now what you want to do maybe are four or five different um, stories in here that you're going to want to uh, sell to your readers, for example. So uh, here I could, uh, or better yet, you could even do a blending mode on there too. Let's try that. Let's add another picture in here and let's do a blending mode with our, uh, with our, uh, gradient right there. Yeah, remember we used the gradient on this layer? So let's go ahead and uh, we'll bring another photograph in there. Now watch this. You can do some cool stuff again with this. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's go to desktop. And remember I had those pictures from earlier. Well, guess what? I have another one in here I want to try. This fractal is kind of cool. Let's see if we can make sense of that. Okay, let's hit enter. We'll bring the fractal up um, as long as it's above the, yeah, that's where we want it, right there. And uh, let's turn off my picture so I can see this better. That looks pretty cool right there. We could probably just even leave that. Um, it's not bad, actually. But let's see. Let's play around with the blending modes here. Let's take this uh, fractal. I like where how it is right now, so I'm going to leave it that way. And let's hit control T and adjust it. Hold down shift and you can then you can just adjust the the height or the width. Let's go all the way up with it. Hit enter. And here we can even rasterize it too if it's uh, if you don't want it to be a smart object. It, I don't think that'll affect anything, but rasterize layer. Okay, now we can do some uh, blending here, right? Oh, that looks nice too. Look at that. So if we turn this on, then we get some really popping uh, patterns going on there. That's kind of neat, right? And then you can go up here and you can mess with the opacity still. 
and still get some of that kind of nice effect too. So sometimes adding a, an additional um, blending mode there can really help things out too. So there you could just add a little texture, right? Let's try some more here. Uh, oops, wrong one. Pin light. Ooh, that's nice too. I mean, some of these really just add those finishing touches. Just awesome. But remember, whatever I choose, I don't want to distract from the... Uh, ooh, that's cool too. I don't want to distract from the text, right, that I'm going to put on there. So I have to be careful. I'm going to go with that for now just because it'll really help with the text there. What was that, hue? Let's try hue. And then what I can do is add an adjustment layer on top of that as a hue saturation, right? So I can get closer to the colors that maybe I want for that. You know, something a little more complimentary to what's on the in the picture. Well, that's cool. That looks nice, too. So maybe a nice balance somewhere in there. Um, click OK or just leave it there. Just click Yes. I'll take that. And uh, so let's say you're happy with everything you have so far, and now you just want to add your stories along here. So remember, what we can do is we can merge this all down to... Uh, what we have so far. Control E. Let's see, let's hit enter. Oh, I'm in the wrong one, no wonder. Let's go to the top layer here, hit Control E. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let's leave that like it is there. Now, what we can do is go up to layer. We can flatten the image or we can merge visible. Okay, once you do that, now everything we have is on one layer. Right. Only do this if you feel like you're done with your previous layers. Right. And now we can add our story titles over here. Um, so, again, using the text tool, you could start by adding your uh, first one. Let's click new layer here. And right here will be our first feature story. Um, we obviously we have to bring the font down there. Right. Let's bring it down to about 14. And let's start with. Uh, here's the feet. One of the feature stories. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see it better. So my first dad story is going to be, uh, I replaced the halogens. Let's go. Let's go to the Olive Garden to celebrate, just to choose an, a familiar restaurant, I guess. Generic. Let's go to the Olive Garden to celebrate. Right? Dad needs to get a little recognition sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so that's my first feature story. Now, again, if it's too small, no worries. You can select it all and go up here in your font size. Maybe you want to go 18. You know, it's whatever you can fit on the page there. And bigger the better sometimes to, for it to be legible. All right, so the next one, again, I'll just do it on another layer. The next story will be something like... Uh, Oh, here's a good one. Why won't my daughter take fashion? Oops. Fashion tips from dad. <laughs> Turn to page 72 to find out more. <laughs> okay, so there's another one, then maybe two or three more. Here's a good one. Uh, why I'm capitalizing dad here just because I don't know. It's about dads. Why dads are the trickiest kind of ATMs. <laughs> So it's kind of from a kid's point of view, too. K 
kids reveal strategies to withdraw money from dad's wallet. Okay, and then maybe one more um, um, party time. Dad, let's see. Dad's breaking out the guitar again. <laughs> you know, so something fun. Some the basically you're making a magazine that reveals some things about you. What's going on in your life right now? You know, give me some insight into who you are. And the idea here is to do a really slick layout to show off your layout skills to potential clients who might want to use you for something. And again, you can add more graphics to this. Again, the idea here, though, is to make sure that the text is legible. Um, and along with using some really cool graphics using blending modes. Now, one other thing I want to show you that can really enhance your text is if you double click on it, we can also, or why is that, is that on all the same layer? I guess it is, huh? So I did three of these on the same layer, but that's okay because they fit really well there. But let's, let's double click that and down here, or let's see, where are we going? Um, I think I need to have the, let's see, let's select all of that again and let's see if we can go, we can't do effects right there, I guess. So we might be able to do effects after, let me fix that spelling error here. Okay, good. All right. Now we might be able to add some effects to this. There's some, there's a T tool up here. Create warp. I don't want to create warp text. I want to use the effects down here. So what I'm thinking is maybe that if I rasterize this, so I'm going to right click on the text. Rasterize by type. And once I do that, now I can use the effects here. So once you rasterize your type and all you do is right click and choose rasterize. Now I can go to my effects and let's go ahead and add some things. Let's add uh Bevel and emboss, maybe, and see what that does. Okay. So you look at it, you can see how it's kind of embossed there a little bit. Not crazy about that. Let's try again. Let's do, um, let's do outer uh, or drop shadow. That might work. Okay. And now here I can adjust the distance. Notice there it's starting to pop out there. Um, the spread here, and you can see that it's popping out even more there. And the size, too, so I can bump that out. That's way too much, right? But that looks pretty good right there, and it helps your text stand out. So now I'll click OK, and I'll try to do the same thing on that other text layer, which is uh, I replaced the halogens, right? So I'm going to right-click that layer. We'll make sure you're outside of the box, though. Right-click the layer. We're going to rasterize type, and now I'm going to apply that same effect there, a drop shadow. And notice there, the settings are all the same, so it just kind of matched it. So that really helps your text stand out. Click OK. And we'll do one more maybe with uh, Dad's Rock on this layer. What we can do, since this is all scrunched down to one layer now, now I can just grab my magic wand tool and select the white in that area. Okay, and now if I turn off, or if I turn on Contiguous, that might make it a little easier to get everything I want without selecting the barcode. Okay, let's just do the, the main title here. We won't worry about the one down beneath it. So select all that area, and now we can apply the effect to that as well. Let's bevel and emboss the title and see what that looks like. Okay. That adds a little effect at the top there, you can see. It's not doing too much to it, but it does add a nice effect to the top of the thing. So deselect it there. Just added that little lighter area. I don't actually like that, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to try another effect here. Let's try... Um, let's do a drop shadow again on there and see if we can make that work. That's not really doing anything on there, is it? 
I'm not sure why. Okay, so that doesn't really do much for us there. Let's see if we can add a gradient just for fun. Um, I'm going to grab the gradient tool and drag across just to see what it does. Well, at least it worked on the uh, title there. So let's see if we can do something a little more. Uh, let's see. Grays, pastels. Let's try a pastel. Ooh, that might look kind of interesting. Let's try that. Okay. And now you grab this and drag it across. And you get a nice pastel look. I don't think that really adds to the magazine. Let's try another one, maybe. Let's try that one. That one's kind of bright. I like that one. Let's do maybe just that far. That looks pretty good. But I think the longer you drag it to, the more that lighter value you can get in there. So that looks cool right there. So I added a little bit of a... Uh, A, a gradient to the title and then I can go up to uh, image adjustments hue saturation maybe lighten that just a little bit oops I want to also I want to do uh, let's go control Z we want to remember we want to keep this selected in order to do this so we don't adjust the rest of the uh, the rest of the picture that it's part of on that layer so again hue saturation bring up the lightness on it Maybe adjust the hue. You could even try bumping the saturation, although that won't do much. That looks cool right there. Okay. So you can play with text effects as well. Again, you have to rasterize the text layer first, and then you can add some of these effects down here, like the uh, drop shadows, you know, the embossing, the beveling. Um, and, uh, that's kind of how it works. And the idea here is to make a magazine cover that looks uh, professional, that, uh, looks official, I guess, and that shows off your skills as a graphic designer and a layout artist as well.